yelling Roma Victor. As his powers assault, General Maximus Decimus Meridius, Russell Crowe, drives his Roman armies to triumph against Germanic brutes in the year 180 AD, finishing a delayed conflict and procuring the regard of old head Marcus Aurelius, Richard Harris, the head's child Commodus, Joaquin Phoenix, and little girl Lucilla, Connie Nielsen, have been called to join the mission in light of the fact that Marcus Aurelius is going to name his replacement. Commodus, certain he'll be picked, is cordial to Maximus, referring to him as sibling. Lucilla and Maximus evidently had a heartfelt contribution previously. Commodus is worried that it will inconvenience her to see him in the future. Lucilla has since hitched, had a child, and been bereaved. Marcus tells Lucilla he requested that she come since her sibling, who's extremely enamored with her, will before long need her like never before. Marcus selects the ethically upstanding Maximus as his replacement, with the comprehension that Maximus will ultimately re-establish the Roman Republic by returning capacity to the Senate. Maximus, yearning to return home to his significant other and child, attempts to decline the honor, however Marcus Aurelius demands that not needing the work makes Maximus the best individual for it. Toward the finish of a twisting meeting in which Commodus blames his dad for not perceiving his ideals and never cherishing him, Commodus admits that all he at any point needed was his dad's affection and endorsement, dash and afterward he covers him. Declaring himself emperor, Commodus asks Maximus for his loyalty, which Maximus, realizing Commodus' involvement in Marcus Aurelius's death, refuses. Commodus orders Maximus arrested and executed and dispatches Praetorian guards to murder Maximus's wife, Giannina Fascio, and young son, Giorgio Cantarini. Maximus escapes his execution and races home only to discover his family's charred and crucified bodies in the smoldering ruins of his villa. After burying his wife and son, a grieving Maximus succumbs to exhaustion and collapses on their graves. Slave traders find Maximus and take him to Zucabar, a rugged province in North Africa, where he is purchased by Proximo, the head of a gladiator school. Distraught and nihilistic over the death of his family and betrayal by his empire, Maximus initially refuses to fight, but as he defends himself in the arena his formidable combat skills lead to a rise in popularity with the audience. As he trains and fights further, Maximus befriends Hagen, a Germanic barbarian, and Juba, a Numidian hunter. Juba becomes a close friend and confidant of the grieving Maximus, and the two speak frequently of the afterlife and Maximus' eventual reunification with his family. In Rome, Commodus resumes the gladiatorial games to honor his dad's demise, P renouncing 150 days of festivity in a bid to win the kind gestures of the Roman people. Proximo's organization of warriors is recruited to take part. Proximo lets Maximus know that his capacities as a contender won't be sufficient in Rome, he really wants to win the expressions of warmth of the crowd. Maximus at first could do without put on a big show, yet Proximo makes sense of that it could save his life, uncovering that he, at the end of the day, used to be a combatant, and subsequent to acquiring fame was liberated by the sovereign Marcus. He shows Maximus the wooden blade he got at that point. Maximus is doubtful at first, you knew Marcus Aurelius? However at that point understands this methodology could get him sufficiently close to Commodus to seek his retribution. In a diversion of the skirmish of Zama at the Colosseum, Maximus drives Proximo's warriors to unequivocal triumph against an all the more remarkable power, no doubt stirring up a lot of surprise for the group. Commodus dives into the field to meet the victors and is shocked to find that the head of Proximo's fighters is Maximus. The head, incapable to kill Maximus in view of the group's thundering endorsement for him, offers the go-ahead sign permitting Maximus to live in mopes out of the field. As the games proceed, Commodus sets Maximus in opposition to Tigris of Gaul, Spinoli Thorson, Rome's just undefeated fighter, in a field encompassed by fastened tigers with overseers educated to target Maximus. Following a serious fight, Maximus barely overcomes Tigris and anticipates Commodus' choice to kill or extra Tigris. However Commodus votes in favor of death. Maximus saves Tigris, purposely offending the ruler and earning the crowd's endorsement. With his severe foe currently known as Maximus the Kind, Commodus turns out to be more baffled at his failure to kill Maximus or stop his rising fame while Commodus' own prevalence shrivels. Following the battle, Maximus meets his previous worker Cicero, Tommy Flanagan, who uncovers that Maximus' military remaining parts faithful to him. They are set up camp at the port of Ostia. Lucilla, progressively unfortunate of her siblings' insecurity and perverted wants, frames a plot with Maximus and congressperson Gracchus to rejoin Maximus with his military and defeat Commodus. Commodus, notwithstanding, gains of his sister's treachery from her young child Lucius and powers her to uncover the plot by undermining the kid. Praetorian watches quickly storm Proximo's fighter sleeping shelter, engaging the warriors while Maximus get away. Hagen and Proximo are killed in the attack while Juba and the survivors are detained. Maximus get away to the city walls just to be trapped by a companion of Praetorian watchmen who use Cicero as lure, 
killing him when Maximus moves into the open. Reasoning that legends brought into the world in the Colosseum should bite the dust there, Commodus by and by moves Maximus to a duel before a thundering crowd. Recognizing that Maximus' expertise surpasses his own, Commodus purposely cuts Maximus with a stiletto, penetrating his lung, and has the injury covered underneath the fighter's reinforcement. In the field, the two trade blows before Maximus stares the blade from Commodus' hands. Commodus demands a blade from his watchman, however they will not loan him their weapons. Maximus drops his own sword, however Commodus pulls a secret stiletto and recharges his assault. Maximus then, at that point, beats Commodus into accommodation and kills him with his own stiletto. As Commodus implodes in the now quiet Colosseum, a perishing Maximus sees his significant other and child in the great beyond. He goes after them, yet is pulled back to reality by the Praetorian administrator Quintus, Thomas Arana, who requests directions. Maximus orders the arrival of Proximus combatants and congressperson Gracchus, whom he re-establishes and teaches to lead the reclamation of capacity to the Senate. As Marcus Aurelius expected, Rome will be a republic in the future. Maximus breakdowns and Lucilla races to his side. Subsequent to being consoled that her child is protected and Commodus is dead, Maximus passes on and meanders into life following death to his home and family somewhere out there. Representative Gracchus and Proximus combatants complete his body of the Colosseum. That evening, a recently liberated Juba covers Maximus two little sculptures of his better half and child in the Colosseum, in the fix of Maximus' blood, and says that he also will ultimately go along with them, however not yet.